For this video, we're going to have a look at how to draw the locus of a point on the end of a slotted link and crank mechanism. Of course, the first step for all of these is to go and draw the given first, which I have drawn over here. All of the measurements in that are given on the question, so it's quite easy to simply go and follow that and go and draw out what they've given to us. Then in the question, they go and tell us that this point D over here is a slotted link which means that our line or our arm CB can move through point D and it can also swivel around point D like that. Okay, And then point A over there is a fixed point, which means point B at the end of arm AB can only move around in a circle and that's why we've drawn in that circle over there. That would be the locus or the path of point B. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and try and find the locus of point P, which is at the end of our arm BC. And we're going to find the locus of point P or the movement path of point P as our arm AB turns around in one full circle. Our point A over there is a fixed point which could be attached to a motor, which then of course would run our mechanism. Okay, but we're going to start off like what we do with any of these by breaking up our circle our fixed motion which is formed by point B into 12 equal parts and to do that of course for a circle we use a 60 and 30 degree set square and we're just in construction going to go and break that up into 12 neat equal parts you can of course break this up into more parts if you wanted to which would give you a more accurate locus, but our minimum that we need is 12 parts. Okay, so now our circle is broken up into 12 parts, and then our next step is to go and label all of the new positions that point B can move into as it goes around point A. So there's point B, then we'd be going to B1, B2, B3, all the way around labeling each of those points okay that then completes 12 positions for arm a b as that arm moves around point a and now, of course, we know that connected to each of those positions of point B is an arm BC. Okay, and we know that every single one of these arms BC has to pass through point D, our slotted link over there. So we're going to take our compass and we are going to place our compass on the length of line BC. Going to open it up to that length. Okay, now for each of these points, we're going to use that same length because, of course, BC is a metal rod. It can't change lengths as this mechanism moves around. Okay, but we know that it's always going to pass through point D. So if we go and move to B1, we're going to make an arc over here, and then we're going to take our ruler. And we're going to go and draw a line from B1 through point D till it hits that arc. And then we're going to mark that off. And we're not going to mark it as point C because we don't want the locus of point C. We want the locus of point P. So we're going to mark that as being P1. Our next, because P is moving with point C as it's exactly the same point. So we'll just mark that as P1. So there's our new position for that arm going through point D. Then we do the same thing again from B2. We're going to place our compass on B2, the length of our original arm. We're going to make another arc. And then we're going to go and join from B through D until it hits that arc. And that, of course, is going to be P2. And we keep on going with the same process all the way around for all 12 of the parts. So we're going to do 
another arc over there and again from B3 through point D so it hits that arc and mark that as P3 okay we're going to keep going one point at a time one arc at a time always moving through point D make sure that you rather do one arc at a time and one point at a time because if you try and rush it and you do too many arcs you're probably going to mix things up and you won't remember what arc belongs to what point so rather do one at a time rather than rushing the process confusing yourself and having to start all over again Okay, so we're halfway now. There's P6. Now we're going to 7. I'm just going to have to move my board down a bit so that you can see where that's going to land up. Okay, my arc goes across the top over there. Okay, and I'm going from there to through point D again. Till it hits the arc. And then the next one, remember your compass does not change lengths at all because we're dealing with the same length line every single time we move the mechanism. Okay, now we're going on to nine. And from 9, again, still through point D. And, okay, our point 9 here is actually in line with that. But it's got to go to where we drew the arc. Okay, then for our 10th one. And then our arc. Again, going through point D. And, of course, that's straight along that line. Up till where it meets our arc. Okay, so we're on P10. Last one to go. Last arc. On B11. Draw in that arc. And again, going through point D. Up until where it hits that arc. That will be a P11. And then, of course, it finishes off back at point P again. Now, what we have to do now is again with our French curve. We're going to go and join all of those points up with our French curve to go and form the locus of point P. And as we always do, we're going to try and get that locus as smooth as we possibly can as we join up all of those points. We'll try and get a knife nice nice smooth locus okay over here we're going to have to do quite a turn as this hops all the way from 78 okay it's going to do the same thing over here as we go from 9 to 10 but let's get these parts in first we're going to have to do a bit of an angle part here And that one. Okay, and then a nice big loop to get from 9 to 10. And then, of course, over here, one nice big loop to get us from 9 to 8. And there we go. We now have our locus of point P on our slotted link mechanism.